It's March and we're in Stratford-upon-Avon, which means we're at the CEBA Annual Conference. CEBA is the Society of Independent Brewers. CEBA has been going for 31 years now and as an organisation has grown from the initial 20 brewers who started it to nearly 500. We have this wonderful growth of the brewers in this country, vast majority of which are producing traditional cask British beer. Right, the opportunity now um, to talk to Julian Grocock, Chief Executive of this wonderful organisation, CEBA. Um, and an organisation that has developed and become enormously important, particularly in the last five, six, seven years, a lot of which is down to Julian. Um, so, Julian, you're in a splendid position now. Where's CEBA going to? As we are now in 2011, we've doubled membership since 2002. We've doubled production of beer since 2002. We've doubled employment since 2002. And the local beer uh, wagon appears to be rolling very, very successfully. We know that beer is generating interest far and above. It's uh, far broader than its traditional uh, typical consumer, the person who's like me with beard and belly. Uh, there's a variety of beer styles now out there. We are engaging more with women, we're engaging more with young people. Uh, a lot of these breweries that have only been founded in the new millennium uh, are run by very young people themselves who are keyed up for things like social networking and the like. One thing that worries me is I always almost feel almost like a social leper at times because I produce alcohol. I am immensely proud of the industry that I represent. I have no sense of guilt, no sense of apology about being involved with it, working with brewers. Uh, I know that the relationship that is critical is the one between the beer and the pub. And the pub is in trouble and the pub is the place where people will drink responsibly, enjoy social activity, where having a drink of a low, a long low alcohol drink uh, is part of the enjoyment, but it's not the be all and end all and the reason for the consuming of it. But I don't think that well run pubs and drinking beer is actually part of any problem with the health of the nation. Now in about two hours time, the winners of the national brewing competition are gonna be announced. There have been nine different categories and regions all around the country voted for winners in those categories. What happened a couple of weeks ago is that all those regional winners uh, were competed against each other and there's been a national winner voted in each category. Now those winners are all on the bar behind this door, which is why it says strictly no entry to the CEBA conference. But this is the video blog that goes places others don't tread. I'm just going to go in here and try the beers anyway, because I'm that kind of guy. So the conference is just through there. Everyone's sitting down. We've got to hope that nobody comes in. Um, I'm just going to have a little taster of each one and see what's one. This is the Horde from the Backyard Brew House. Yep, lovely hop aroma. Yeah, interesting because it's not following the fashion for these very, very citrus New World hops at the moment. This is a good old fashioned golden ale. It's really refreshing, really nice. Admiral of the Blues from the Boland Brewery. A nice sort of hazy gold colour. And this, oh, this must be dry hops. It's got, it, it, it smells like putting your face into a, into a sack of hops, like it was just brewed this morning. And quite interesting on the palate. It's, it doesn't taste the way that you would think it would from the aroma. Really, really chewy toffee. Uh, I would expect a much bigger hop hit that isn't there. So this must have had a, you know, quite a big dry hop very late in the process, but uh, not as much early on. Old Sudbury Mild from the Cotswold Spring Brewery. A little bit lighter than I would uh, normally have for a mild. A lovely kind of chocolatey sort of chestnut colour. Now I've been going on for quite a long time as the, on the blogs through the winter about the lovely coffee, camp coffee, chocolate uh, aromas in mild. Not as, not as prevalent on, the, on here as it has been on some that we've tasted. Quite light in flavour, very satisfying. Not got the, uh, uh, the intensity of, of flavour of, of some milds that I've had in the past. Actually a really, really sessionable beer. Blueberry Classic Bitter. Uh, this is the 
winner in these speciality beers. It's nice to see British brewers doing a bit more experimentation, trying to put uh, different ingredients in, brewing you know beers with fruit that are not like Belgian fruit beers, which have got quite a different base. These are uh, bitter British beers uh, with, with, with fruit in them. It's quite a strange aroma. It's definitely fruity, but very kind of candy-ish fruit. It smells like a sweet shop. Taste of violets. Taste of those violet sweets that you used to get. Um, not really my taste, but really, really nice. I've managed to find Amy from Harveston Brewery. Great brewery, great beers. Qualified brewer? Yes, I am, yes. From? Um, I studied at Heriot Watt University in Edinburgh. And um, I'd done my honours degree there. So what took you into brewing? I kind of stumbled upon it, to be honest. Uh, when I was looking to go to university, I wanted to do biology, uh, but I was looking for something with a little bit more, something a bit more interesting. I stumbled upon the course and I fell in love with it straight away. When you brew beer, you make a product, you care about it, what goes into it, and afterwards you can go and enjoy it sociably, can't you? Yes, that's it. You've got, you've got such a passion for what you do and you've got to believe in the product you make. So, exactly, you, you care about what goes into it and then you, you enjoy it at the end of it because you know what hard work went into making it. So. And what's your favourite beer? Am I allowed to say my own? <laughs> <laughs> and which one would you say that is? Uh, I like Bitter and Twisted. Bitter and Twisted. Yeah, it's one of my favourites. True Grit from Millstone. Uh, pale Ale. Lovely kind of lagery colour. I think there might be a little bit of hop floating in there. Yeah, it's been dry hopped. It's uh, got those lovely kind of citrusy, piney, resiny aromas that we expect from a from a from a hoppy pale ale with uh, with new world with new world hops in it. Mm. It's got body. It's got depth. But it's got those lovely top notes. Those kind of things that really sing out and, and really stimulate your mouth. Elland Brewery from Leeds. A nice, strong porter. We had a porter when we were back in London. Uh, obviously, London's where porter came from. See how the North manages to uh, to live up to it. Kind of deep, kind of red berry fruit and chocolate, like a black forest gatto in a glass. So deep and, and mellow and, and satisfying. That is an outstanding. Porter. Monkey Wrench from the Delside Brewery, strong bitters. Uh, this is 5.3%, but I expect it to be quite dark and to have lots of uh, sort of multi red berry, uh, red fruit flavours to it. Well, you can see it's the right colour, it's kind of very chocolatey brown. Spicy aroma, I get a uh, chocolate cake off that, uh, marzipan and, uh, and macerated fruit. Mmm. And a very very smooth, almost kind of creme brulee mouthfeel. It's you can, you can feel the strength in the beer, uh, just be, just because of the, the the texture in your mouth. An Imperial Russian Stout from Old Gates Brewery, another good Northern brewery. Uh, Seven point one percent, a fantastic traditional beer style, originally designed for the Tsars. Uh, fuel of Saint, uh, Tsar Peter's got in Saint Petersburg. You can see from looking at it, that's so dense. Hmm. And this is another beer that I would normally get dark chocolate and, and rich coffee grounds from. This one's a bit different, kind of licorice. Yeah, it's almost spiritous. It just tastes like you're drinking something thick, black, velvety, quite challenging. So I'm here with Duncan Sambrook, who set up Sambrook's Brewery in southwest London just over two years ago. You had quite a good job, why didn't you jack it in and do beer? Gosh, good question. I think uh, I've always had a passion for beer, and um, certainly since I've, since I've jacked in the job and, 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 and got into the industry, uh, I've been really pleased by the way I've been embraced by other brewers. Um, yeah. uh, there just seems to be a passion uh, about brewing beer, which you don't really get in other industries. You can share ideas. Um, and I, I think one of the funny things about brewing is you can go to any of the 700 odd breweries in the UK and every single one we differ in their own ways. How long have you been brewing now? We've been up and running since the beginning of November 2010, so just a couple of months really. A couple of months. And why, why beer and brewing? Uh, I love beer. I really, really enjoy my cask beers, keg beers as well. Um, 
so yeah, it just kind of progressed. I used to have a pub and I brewed there, and now the opportunity came to start up just brewing. So small brewing plant. We're currently working off a two-barrel kit in the basement of somebody else's pub who wasn't really using it. Um, we've expanded out of it so rapidly. We're, we're going up to a six-barrel kit at the beginning of April this year. So you'll be taking over calls soon, won't you? Hopefully, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two years, just coming up two years now. Right. You've made a real variety of beers in that time. Some really excellent, flavourful beers. You've won a few prizes for them and stuff. Yeah. What is it? In, what is it that you try and put into a beer? What sort of, in terms of flavour, what what are the things that excite you in, in brewing? We want to do something um, to move away from the expected. Um, nothing against camera at all, but I think. Specifically, women uh, think of camera and old ales and boring. Um, yeah. We wanted to do something that would grab the attention, not only of women, maybe of some younger drinkers as well. Yeah. Something that would be a, a little bit different. So we wanted something that would entice those people in that wouldn't necessarily try with the ales. And once you've got them in there, you've got them hooked. And oh, what's the favourite one that you've made? Well, it's got to be blackberry sales. <laughs> As the party continues, I've got old Nick, <laughs> Cotswold Spring Brewery, winner of the Supreme Champion with Old Sobbery Mild. What's Old Sobbery? Uh, old Sobbery is actually an area in Chipping Sobbery yeah. where originally Milds and that porters were actually uh, produced and the Old Sobbery Mild is actually based on a recipe brewed at the turn of the century by the Black Dog Brewing Company in Old Sobbery. You know your beer, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Nick, very many congratulations. Thank you. Superb win. Right. Champion beer receiver. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. That'll do.